Good evening, everyone. It's so good to see you all tonight. Uh, welcome to our Kiwanis webinar. My name is Brian Cofrancesco. I'm the Leadership Development Coordinator for the New England and Bermuda District and a member of the Kiwanis Club of Meriden, Connecticut. And it's great to see so many of you here on Zoom and welcome to those of you who are watching us live tonight on Facebook. Our workshop tonight is about Kiwanis International Partners. This is the 20th, can you believe 20th, for those of you who've been with us for a while, session in our virtual workshop series. We've been going since December. And we hope you're enjoying these sessions and that you will encourage others in your club to join us every Wednesday evening at seven o'clock p.m. If you or your members are not receiving our emails with information about our workshop schedules, uh, you can drop us a line at education at newenglandkiwanis.org. Um, Elise is gonna drop that in the chat and we will look into it to make sure you are signed up. Um, she's also gonna drop a link to the registration for our May workshops. So if you have not seen that link yet, you can sign up tonight to join us next month. A reminder that all of our workshops have the potential to count as inter-club credit on your monthly secretary's report. So if you have enough members here tonight to qualify for an inter-club, you get to count an inter-club with each individual club that's joining us. So in order to help everyone determine the number of inter-clubs, as always, we ask you to please introduce yourself in the chat and share your name and your club. If your club is eligible, you can do one of three things to track attendance. Uh, first, you can write down the names of the clubs who you see posted in the chat, or you can click the little ellipses, the dot, dot, dot next to the chat and click save chat. And at the end of tonight's presentation, when you leave Zoom, your computer will download a copy of the chat. So you can just go right through the transcript and copy the names of the clubs who are here tonight. Or um, we will be posting in our Google Drive of resources, a list of all the clubs that were here tonight, um, compiled by our inter-club liaison, David Griffin, here on our education committee. And that link to the, that folder is in your confirmation email for tonight's workshop. So you can do one of those three things and share that list of clubs with your club secretary. Before we get started tonight, a couple housekeeping points. Please make sure you are muted, uh, which will ensure an uninterrupted presentation this evening. If you are new to Zoom, the mute button is in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. If you see a line through the microphone, that indicates that you are muted, which is what we are asking for. You are welcome to keep your camera on. It's always so nice to see everyone like an in-person workshop or conference, but that is not required if you prefer to keep your camera off. If you have questions for tonight's presenter, please post them in the chat. You can either send them as a group message or send them directly to me. And if you are on Facebook, you can post a comment in the live stream and we will pull all the questions and ask them at the very end of the presentation. Tonight's workshop will last about an hour. Uh, you will be able to find a recording of this workshop on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel if you'd like to rewatch it or if you'd like to share it with your club and your fellow Kiwanis members. So with that, we are ready to get started. So um, quick show of hands, how many of you knew that Kiwanis International had partnerships? All right, well, Kiwanis actually has nearly 30 partnerships with organizations and companies um, and many of them provide benefits to you as an individual Kiwanis member, as well as to your club. So from club resources to benefits, there's really something for everyone. And tonight we are very fortunate to have right from Kiwanis International, Elizabeth Warren, who is the manager of corporate relations at the Kiwanis International office in Indianapolis. And this evening, she's going to tell us all about Kiwanis' partnerships and benefits. And she is the expert on this topic. I'm sure she has a lot to get through and tell us about. So I'm going to ask you all to please join me in a round of applause and a warm welcome for Elizabeth Warren. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you. So many great faces and uh, lots of familiar ones as well. Um, pleasure to be here. I was telling Brian and Elise before you all joined that I'm from New England. I'm from Connecticut. So it's nice to be, be home again and have, um, have some camaraderie with all of that. I grew up in Granby, Connecticut. I went to uh, school at Westminster School in Simsbury. And then I went to the University of Vermont. So I tried a long time New Englander, but been gone longer than I've been 
I've been here longer than I've been there. So I do miss my roots quite a bit. Um, that's good to see you. So I'm gonna take, take uh, first to just do a little poll and kind of do an icebreaker and just kind of have some fun and just see what people are thinking about these would you rather questions. So I'm gonna start the poll. For those that are unfamiliar with the poll, you just take your mouse and you click the one that you prefer. So just two options, super simple. Um, okay. Launch it. All right. Do you have to base of the poll? Thumbs up. Okay, good. All right. The first question is Would you rather be a famous celebrity or live like a hermit? Neck and neck, kind of. All right, I think we've finished out. Oh, there's a few more coming in, some stragglers. Okay, all right, we're gonna end the poll. We are we are tied almost, but most of you wanna be a famous celebrity. So if you want, put in the chat who you wanna be. Okay, all right, we're gonna to go to the next question. How do I go to the next question? Let's see. Here we go. Number three, would you rather be able to read minds or be able to see the future? Okay, I'm gonna leave each poll up for 30 seconds. So there we go, 30 seconds have already passed. So see the future in the lead. I think that's a good choice too. Next question. We're gonna to go to, I'm still struggling with this, I apologize. Okay, here we go, number four. Would you rather make a financial donation or donate your talents in a service project. <laughs> okay, and the poll. Very interesting, isn't it? I would say that uh, as you are all planning your service projects, keep this in mind. Okay. All right, the next one. Would you rather be an amazing chef or be an amazing driver? Amazing chef is where it's at. Okay. Six. Would you rather be, this is an interesting one, I think. Would you rather be an advisor to Key Club or Circle K? Look at the results. Key Club wins, but not by much. A few more. Would you rather be able to fly or to be able to teleport?
Fly is the answer. Would you rather be in one Kiwanis club for 50 years or hop around to help new clubs get started? Here we go, we've got some loyal Kiwanians in the group. Want to be around for a longevity in one club. Okay. Would you rather swim the Atlantic Ocean or bike across the United States? Okay, biking across the United States wins by a landslide. I think swimming across the Atlantic Ocean would be grueling. Okay. One more, two more. Oh, here's the, maybe the last one. Last question, I believe. Would you rather be club president or club secretary for one term? Okay. Club president at 76%. Oh, this is the last question. I apologize. This is a good one, though. Would you rather teach a kid to read or teach a kid to ride a bike? All right, we are we are a reading group in this in this meeting tonight. Twenty or eight twenty four of you want to teach reading to children, and three of you want to teach them how to ride a bike, and that's very telling because um, it will segue nicely into the presentation that literacy is a very popular project among Kiwanis clubs, and so therefore we've secured some literacy partners to help with all that. So I'm going to end the poll now. That was really fun. Thanks, guys. And then, Brian, I think I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. So bear with me while I do that. So you guys can see it okay? All right. Okay. I'm going to now start. Move this over to this screen so I can look at you guys as we're talking. Can you still see it okay? Oh, shoot. okay. I'm going to move it back. Apologize. Now you can still see it? Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to talk about the corporate partner program at Kiwanis International. Um, we have started this partnership program about 11 years ago because. Uh, there was there was some talk among the board about good business practices and um, the fact that we were so heavily reliant on membership dues that that's just not a good model to follow. So our board tasked us with finding corporate partners to help support support the bottom line of of Kiwanis International and bring in non dues revenue to help support our programs. So um, our executive director and the board at the time built a team to create this partnership structure and we're still moving along. So um, that's where it all began about 11 years ago. We, uh, when we go out looking for partner prospects, we're very intentional uh, to make sure that they align uh, their industry leaders in their field of, of, of what they are selling or providing or what they, what they stand behind. 
they align with our mission. Uh, this third bullet is really, really, really vital. So we do a lot of listening to what our clubs are doing and or wanting for partnerships. So we wanna make sure that every partner we have either supports club activities or supports the interests of you as members. Many times when you join a membership organization, along comes a bunch of membership benefits. You know, if you're an AARP, you've got tons and tons of different things to get discounts from based on uh, if, if you want to travel a lot, if you want to go on cruises or, or things like that. But we were kind of behind on that at Qantas International. So we're working hard to develop the member interest program. So you're gonna see more of that in the future, most likely. And we're also looking for long-term partnerships. So we're looking for those partners that don't just want to sponsor a booth at the exhibit hall, but want to work with us for a long-term relationship to build um, to build that connection with Kiwanis International Clubs and members. Okay, so um, in a nutshell, we have two different partner types. We have our club resources. So again, those are uh, groups that support basically the club's service projects and, the, or, and or the club activity. We also have the member benefits. So these are um, have been built kind of definitely to support what we've been told Kiwanis members like to do. So um, they like to travel. They like to make sure their health and, and, and insurance are taken care of. They like to uh, have a variety of different options for vision care. Her thought, we'll get into these in a little bit more detail, but a lot of these were created in the last few years just to help support um, your membership and bring you value. The ones in yellow, the partnerships in yellow are revenue generating partnerships. So back to what I said at the beginning, our goal not only was to help support your club activity and support you as a member, but also help our bottom line at Kiwanis by bringing in revenue. So those ones in yellow support that. The ones in white are equally important, but they do not bring revenue to the organization, but they bring tremendous value. So you'll see many that have been around for a long time, like Boy Scouts and Boys and Girls Club of America. We certainly support those, the, the continuation of those partnerships. So now I'm gonna talk about how we promote our partners from Quantum International to make sure um, you understand that it, it is a it, it's a very intentional uh, way we go about promoting the partners because we do get sometimes some questions from people about saying you know how are you selling my name are you selling my address are you selling my my email because I feel like I'm getting a lot of emails from these partners I just want to walk through that so we can just address that so uh, we manage the membership database and utilize a third party vendor to conduct mailings and solicitations. So we never send any mailing lists from Kiwanis International directly to a partner if they have the ability to market for themselves. So if, um, if you're receiving an email directly from a partner, that is because we share information to a third party that is protected and will not then release that information to anyone. The member benefits are being developed through member research. So one of the beautiful tools we use is the custom question that is in the monthly club report that the club secretary is complete. So when um, our team is vetting a potential new partnership, we do a lot of due diligence to ask our clubs if they would be interested in something like a new literacy partner. And if we're seeing an overwhelming response that says, absolutely, we want that, then we'll go and continue that conversation and vet it even more. We have experienced professionals behind the building the Nandis revenue programs. So Bill Jarrow, who's on my team, he has over 20 years experience, more like over 30 years experience in this industry. So he, he's, he's well equipped to make sure that this previous slide I had over here meets what everything we're talking about. Great every partner that we bring on. Okay, back to, I wish there's a way to go quicker on that. Anyway, um, number four, participation of the partner is up to each member. So as you know, your membership is, is your choice. So at no time are you required to do anything with any of these partners. Of the 30 or so partners that Brian talked about at the beginning, I always say, you can find a connection to three to five of those partners 
I'm happy with that. I'm really happy that something is clicking for you and or your club and we're bringing you some value. So there is never a push or a requirement to work with any of the partners that we have at Kiwanis International. Number five, so um, it's very easy to remove yourself from any partner specific solicitation. In the emails we send out on behalf of the partners, we always put a box at the bottom that says, um, do you want to unsubscribe from anything from eHealth, for example? You would click that and then you would only be unsubscribed from anything from eHealth. And I, I really wanna stress this because by, by law, we have to also have an unsubscribe button at the very bottom of the email. If you click that, then you're unsubscribed from everything from Kiwanis International. So you're not going to receive anything ever again from an organization unless you tell us, please resubscribe me. But if you click that, that link in the gray box at the bottom of the emails, you will only be unsubscribed from that specific partner uh, promotions. So that's a key thing to remember. Um, the last thing is that KM membership lists are not being sold. You get asked, asked that question a lot. And so I'll be very transparent with you to make sure you realize that that is, that is not the case and it's not happening. Okay, I'm right here to put any questions you have in the chat box and we can address those at the end of our time together. All right. Next up, I would like to show this because honestly, I'm quite proud of the, of the work we've done over the last 11 years to develop this partnership portfolio. Um, it has grown, evolved, pivoted, changed over the years. We've, we um, have a few that have been with us since the very beginning. We have a few that have left and a few that are brand new. So I will um, go into detail about each of these in a few, in a few uh, minutes, but this is part one of all of our partners. Um, Home Depot right here is a fairly new partnership. I'll go into, um, into the benefits of that in a few minutes. Uh, but Landscape Structures, you probably are well aware of as our beloved playground partner. They've been with us since 2012. So some, some longevity here with our partnerships. And then here's our second page. So these are a fairly newer ones. Um, point out the preferred charities, March of Dimes, and Boy Scouts have been with the organization for, for decades. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. All right. So partners in detail. So this is, um, these are our highest level of partnerships. They um, represent the, 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 the most uh, access to Kiwanis members and the family of clubs. They have created a partnership with us that is a sponsorship more than a revenue share. And I, what I mean by that is they pay an annual fee to um, work with our Qantas clubs versus a revenue share, which is a percentage of a purchase for, for a product that somebody, a Qantas member has bought. So we have a partnership with Hilton, which gives preferred rates and amenities for members. Most of the time, this is more connected to supporting district event planning. I will probably get soon a lot of emails from the district is asking for support with their upcoming meetings to see if we can find preferred pricing or benefits or some sort of discount for their district conventions and or large meetings now that we're getting into that season. Nickelodeon kind of ebbs and flows based on what's happening with them as an organization but you may remember Worldwide Day of Play. It's an uh, annual event in September that we help support where we ask kids to get off their devices and go outside and play. And we ask Kiwanis Clubs to help support that. And then Landscape Structures is our playground partner who their signature event is the Legacy of Play Contest, which will continue this year. So we will be launched in August and uh, we'll get the word out soon on those details for our club. Next up, we have our community partners. These are um, organizations that really uh, are on the ground supporters of service projects and club initiatives. Um, Reading as Fundamental is probably the most engaged with our Aquinas clubs because of the literacy connection and how they offer numerous resources for our clubs with um, inspiring passion for reading with children, providing quality content to make an impact. Um, they're, just, they're just really a cutting edge organization that's bringing a lot of value to our Aquinas clubs. 
sister cities engage as local clubs and sister cities events program and exchange programs. So many times Kiwanis clubs will work with another community to do um, basically like pen pal type of programs. You're encouraged to walk for JCI. Um, you may or may not know, but most uh, communities do have a JCI chapter. <clears throat> Those members age out at age 40. So it's a really good connection to make with the Kiwanis Club to try to transfer that uh, talent into your Kiwanis Club once they age out. So uh, National League of Cities <clears throat> works with Kiwanis Clubs to engage community discussions surrounding early childhood and development issues. So for those clubs that are um, still very highly engaged in young children, priority one, that's a good connection to make in their community. I will say Up With People, sadly, is on a hiatus. With COVID, they have not been able to do anything uh, at all because travel was the, a big part of their organization. So they are on pause and hopefully can regroup next year. Our preferred charities are probably, you know, this is the original group of partnerships that we had back in the day. Um, the oldest would be Boy Scouts. I think they are, have been with us since the 50s, then probably far, followed by March of Dimes. Boys and Girls Clubs is fairly new, and that's, I would say, where you see a lot of connections getting made um, because they are, mimic very much what a Qantas Club is doing with schools. So a lot of time, uh, Qantas clubs will go into a Boys and Girls Club and uh, do programs for mentoring the kids, uh, bring in bug and terrific kids, things like that. They can really support the kids' development and just the mentoring initiatives that we offer for them. All right. Um, now we're going to get into club resources, where uh, these were intentionally created to help support club projects. Uh, find discounts, just bring extra value to whatever you're doing and give you the option to stretch your service dollars. So Office Depot uh, is, is available to do a club savings program where you can save on copies. That's where we see the majority of the partnership be successful is in club copies. I mean, uh, paper copies, like black to white copies, I think are like two and a half cents a page. So it's a great value. Colonial Flag Foundation is fairly new. They uh, exist to do flag fundraising events where you could either do a subscription program in your community and um, put flags out on the five flag holidays for those uh, members that want to participate and or do larger events where you may see um, flags out on display around major, major holidays or recognition of first responders or um, the, the medical people in your community. There's, I think, a lot of potential there with COVID happening uh, right now. There are two newest ones. Home Depot, you can get discounts on all of the, the needs you may need, the projects you may need for your service projects, um, paint, uh, wood, mulch, things like that. And then Shop with Script is a fundraiser that you can do virtually. Instead of going door to door to ask people to buy gift cards, this can all be done virtually. All right, finally, uh, I want to share with you the uh, member benefits that are available to you as a Qantas member. Qantas Insurance has uh, products that help provide extra coverage as members age. Qantas Visa Rewards is an affinity Qantas credit card where a portion of every purchase benefits the Qantas Children's Fund. Hilton enhances your member experience with its Fast Track to Gold program, where you can earn gold status uh, four times faster. eHealth is a Medicare supplement insurance. So when open enrollment happens this fall, you'll hear a lot more from us about eHealth. Ruth and they take vacation desks. So sadly, they're, they're not back in business really yet. Um, cruising has not returned from uh, where they used to be, but we know our members love to cruise, so hopefully that will pick back up again once um, everyone feels more comfortable with cruising. Just know that when you do book a trip with Cruise Vacation Death, the members receive a 3% cash back on each trip, as well as any, short, any sort of bonuses that are offered throughout the year. Uh, BSP is a vision care provider, so if you're looking for a vision, uh, a supplemental vision program, this would be for you. 
And then Perk Spot is um, more of an advocate of lots of different benefits. So things even like Costco, Samsung, um, Peloton, there's all sorts of different discounts that they have. They, I think they have over 10,000 vendors that they work with to provide you discounts. The last one is ID Resolve. Um, if you fall victim to identity theft, what would you do? Uh, with ID Resolve, you'll have 24 hour identity resolution that helps protect your money, your time, and your financial reputation. So that is our corporate partner um, structure in a nutshell. But I open it up to this, uh, to this group for questions at this time. Excellent. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. There, I sure. still can't get over, even the number of times I've been to the website, how many partners there are. Oh, um, and what actually, a great that's a great point. I was, I was going to share um, the website to see the most very up-to-date uh, partnerships and what we have going on. It's very easy to remember. It's just guanas.org slash partners. And that will give you all the details. Each logo is uh, on that page. You just click the logo and that will bring you to either a Kiwanis page with more detail or directly to the partner branded page for uh, more information. Excellent. And you can all see Elisa's dropped that link in the chat so you can head right to that website. Um, we have had some questions come in, Elizabeth, so I'll ask them and please keep them coming. Whether you're watching on Facebook, you can post them there or you can drop them in to me in the chat. Um, the first one is how often do you add new partners? You know, um, it's a great question. We, we at the very beginning seem to kind of go very quickly and a lot of action was happening and it stabilized. And now we're seeing in the industry falling off of those partners that want to sponsor us and pay an annual fee and seeing much more of uh, partners saying they would like to work with us, but we do a revenue share. So I may have mentioned it earlier, I think I did that I imagine that you're, you're going to see the member benefit program expand and the club resources plateau and not see as many things come in on that. Um, but we always welcome any suggestions you have for partnerships. If you feel like, um, hey, we're really missing the mark on X, just let us know and we can start exploring that partnership opportunity. Leads very well into our next question. Can members and how can members suggest potential partners? Yes, so um, you can either email me or you can, but the, the better person who emails Bill Jero, who is the one that explores new partnerships, he can be reached at B-J-E-R-R-O-W at kiwanis.org. Excellent. Okay, I think I accidentally unsubscribed from all Kiwanis emails. How can I be re added? Easy. Just send me an email. What the easier way to do it? I wonder if I can. Uh, so, if you go to the Kiwanis website, kiwanis.org, at the very bottom, there should be a button that says subscribe. When you go into that button, then you can create your preferences of what things you want to receive. So, like update or dateline or and youth protection or um, convention information. So you can then click the different things you want to receive and then you'll get resubscribed to everything. If you, if you can't find it, just let me know and I can help you out. But if you, if you've unsubscribed that I'm glad you're talking, asking to resubscribe because you're missing out on some great stuff. Absolutely. There's so many good emails that come out from Kiwanis International mm -hmm. from the foundation. So please, if you're not receiving those emails from the district or from Kiwanis International, um, reach out to us for the district emails and reach out uh, or check the Kiwanis website to be reinstated to the Kiwanis International emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Do you have a favorite Kiwanis partner? Hmm, that's Tricky hard. One. This sounds like they're all my. They're all. It's like they're all my children. I, I can't choose. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the literacy projects and the literacy partners we have. I, I feel like they just bring such impact and value to Kiwanis. And I, like the majority of you, I, I I really do love hands-on service and and uh, and I. But but at the same time, I I feel like 
we're trying to do a, a really good job of finding partners that are very deep and diverse so that you can, as a club, if literacy is important to you, we've got a partner for you. If playgrounds are important to you, we have a partner. So we're, we're trying really hard to just be where you're at with what you want to do for service and help your community and then support that with a partnership that can take it to the next level. Boys and Girls Club too, I think is a tremendous partnership. You know, I see it, lots of opportunity with membership in that partnership where you can explore asking their, their staff to join your club, um, which is wonderful to have, to have that experience happen. But uh, those kids just really um, are, are just greatly impacted by the partnership. Okay, the, uh, the next question I'll ask folks to put in the chat. Um, there was a question wondering if there is anybody on from JCI tonight, any JCI senators. Oh. It sounds like I'm wondering, Patricia, if you yourself, Patricia in Bermuda, are a JCI senator. So if you are a JCI senator, if you could uh, post a comment to everybody in the chat. It's a great idea. Okay, so we've got some questions, like specific questions about certain um, partners. Um, the first one is, how can clubs work with reading is fundamental? Is it just by doing a reading program in our communities or are there ways to partner with the organization itself? So that's, that, thank you for that question. Um, they have various things throughout the year that they offer organizations. Um, most recently, they had a program with Read Aloud where they were encouraging uh, people to go into schools and do or virtually and do read aloud programs. So my best advice to you is just continue to watch what we promote either through Facebook or through email about the different opportunities with reading and fundamental and also go to their website, uh, which I don't know that by heart, but if you, if you just do Google, you can find it, I'm sure, and just subscribe to receive all of their promotions that they have going on. And everything is free or very reduced that they offer. Excellent, thank you for that one. Okay, the next, uh, I'm gonna lump two questions together. They're both about Nickelodeon. Um, the first one is, when is Nickelodeon's Worldwide Day of Play this year? And the second question is, um, if you could talk about the Nickelodeon partnership and is it associated with Viacom and CBS? So, great questions too. Um, I'll be very transparent with everybody. The Nickelodeon partnership has been uh, impacted greatly because of COVID. They, 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 as, a, as, an, as a cable channel, they have just really eliminated a, a lot of programming. So my best guess is Worldwide Day of Play will be late September. That's normally when it happens. But they are a partner that um, goes a mile a minute, and they often just can't get their marketing put together for us to do a proper uh, proper promotions and give clubs ample time to prepare for it. Um, that being said, we'll do our very best to get the word out to our clubs that that when Worldwide Day of Play happens and um, work with work with everybody to to provide project ideas and things like that. What what you could do is just take the integrity of the project and mimic it in your community and just do kind of a no device day and do some wonderful things outside for. Uh, fishing or sports or bike rodeos or, or things that can get kids out and about and away from TVs and devices, TV, TV and devices. They are associated with Viacom, last I heard, um, but that is a constant moving, moving thing and the cable channels are just always um, very divisive to see, to see who's owning what at the time. Thank you for that explanation. That's really sure. helpful, mm -hmm. um, especially for Worldwide Day of Play. I was wondering that too. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's it's usually like the third Saturday in September, but um, it's been a very unusual time. And actually, kind of to build off of that, do you find that most clubs plan events of their own, or do they do more like awareness raising to get kids out um, and off of devices? Awareness raising. Yeah, I think that it, it, a great suggestion I have is just contact the schools and see what they could, what you could do in collaboration with schools to just um, get kids off of devices that aren't necessarily educational. 
if they are, uh, you know, my kids, they have Chromebooks now they're interested from the school, so we can't say they can get off their Chromebooks, but what, what could we do beside that? Excellent. And so uh, we do have more questions. And so as they come mm -hmm. to you, please continue to send them in. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is, thank you for mentioning the Boys and Girl, Boy Scouts and Boys and Girls Club partnerships. Are there any efforts to create partnerships with Girl Scouts or Girls Incorporated? So I don't know why that's never come up. I, I, I would like to, to know that myself. Um, I'll put that on my list as a question I follow up with Brian and Elise and let you know why we have not explored that. I, I really don't, don't have the answer, sadly. All right, let us know. I do, we what can, I do, what I, well, what I do know is this, is Boy, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts do not work well together. So there could be something there happening where they don't want to talk to us because we do have a partnership with Boy Scouts. I, I really, that would be my best guess, but I'll find out a little bit more and get back to you guys. Excellent. Uh, oh, the other thing too is Boy Scouts have now admitted girls. So you, the opportunity exists for girls to be part of Boy Scouts now. Okay. How does shop with script work? So do you, you may have seen this in, if you have kids in school or, um, or grandkids in school where instead of going door to door and asking you to buy a gift card to Kroger or a grocery store in your community. Um, I'm trying to think of the big ones in New England. Big Y, I remember Big Y. What else is that? Shop, uh, Shop and Save. I don't know if that's out there still. But anyway, what they would do is they would say, hey, so uh, your class club would then go and talk to members in your community and or your club members and say, you're already going to be spending money at your grocery store. How about you upfront it with a gift card and then your Kiwanis Club would earn a portion back on the purchase of that gift card. So that's how it works is you just replenish the gift card when you run out and or it's all digitally based, but you can just do it within your own club members and say, here are the vendors that are available from Shop of Script, or you can put it out there in the community and even grow it more. But it's a fundraising initiative that you can do all virtually um, there's, there's no need to go door to door. It's just a matter of creating uh, interest and in getting the gift card purchase for places you already shop at. That sounds like a really nice and easy fundraiser. <laughs> there, is, there is, and I don't know, show of hands, who's planning to go to the uh, Educational Leadership Conference this summer in Salt Lake? In person? Virtually? Maybe. <laughs> well, the uh, Shop List Group has created a uh, presentation that will be available virtually that will guide you through exactly how to start a, a, one of the projects and get it going in your club. So be on the lookout for that. Wonderful. Okay, the next one has to do with Kiwanis Travel. There are two questions about this. Um, first, if you sign up for Kiwanis Travel, is it all Kiwanians who are traveling or is it just a Kiwanis discount? And when cruises start up again, how would you access the cruise and vacation site? First question, uh, the Kiwanis Travel trips are group trips. So you'd be on the trip with not just yourself, but others as well. However, if there is enough interest to create just a Kiwanis trip, we can look into that for you, like a governor's trip or... Uh, a club trip, something along those lines. Um, we can certainly support those uh, those interests and look into it for you. Cruise and vacation desk. Uh, once cruising starts back up again, you just simply go to Kiwanis.org Partners and click on their link, and then you can start shopping for cruises that you're that you're interested in. Excellent. And so, cruise, uh, so just quickly, cruise and vacation desk is like a is an aggregate of all of the cruise lines. So they, they don't just have Norwegian or Holland or, or Princess, they have many, many, many different cruise lines. So if you are a fan of one specific cruise line, do go there and look to see what those options are because it may help you grow your points and get that discount. I talked about it for 3% cash back for future cruises. 
Excellent. You have so much information about all these. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next one was, has the Salvation Army ever been considered as a partner? Many clubs in the New England and Virginia District have done bell ringing or other partners, uh, other projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so there's two answers to that. And one is um, we absolutely recommend clubs. If you have a partnership that, that, that it currently exists in your community and is, is, is doing very well, please don't stop. Please continue to do that. Um, but what we do is to see if there's critical mass in a partnership like Salvation Army. And if there are enough clubs across the, across the nation or globe that are doing that, we would explore a national, national and international partnership. It's not the case with Salvation Army, believe it or not. Um, but if it does get to that point, we would look into seeing if there's something we could do for a, a service partner. So they would be considered a community partner because they don't, they don't, they would not bring revenue to the international. And then, yes, that was, I think that answered everything in that question. So uh, the next one is kind of pulling back out more general. How do members or clubs take advantage of all of these benefits? Is there an ID mm -hmm. or code we need to share with partners to tell them we are Kiwanians? Yeah, so, so that is that is a big challenge that I, I will share that I'm, I'm disheartened by because sometimes a, I've heard a Kiwanis club will go to an office depot and be like, hey, I know there's a natural partnership, what's my discount? And the, the person working the counter does not know, sadly, about what's happening with Kiwanis. And that's just a reflection of the top down not happening. So the corporate office is not sharing with those local franchises that we have that partnership. So if that's happening, please just shoot me an email and I can try to make some connections for you and figure out where, where the disconnect is. But um, that's just a big example. What they do is they create a club savings discount card and, and or um, an app on your phone and you just bring that to the to the desk and then they, they scan your QR code so they know what the discount should be. What's happening most of the time is that the Qantas member or the club are not taking those steps to register their club properly. They're just assuming that they can go to the Home Depot and Home Depot gets it and they understand Qantas has a partnership. They will not know that unless you fully register your club into the program. Excellent. We have a, a comment here from Judy Barrett, who it sounds like she just recently, or she might have done this. You register for Office Depot, you get a card cut out with the SPC number to use. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we're going to promote this shortly in Update, which is our, our, our big newsletter. Right now, you can use the code. We're going to share an update to go to your local Office Depot, and they will laminate your COVID vaccine card for free. Nice. That's a really great benefit. Mm -hmm. So we have three or four questions left. A reminder, if you have them, please send them to me as a message in the chat. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can leave a comment on the stream. Um, the next one is, um, would you be willing to share the trivia poll questions that you had at the beginning for clubs? Sure. I think Brian has them. Brian, would you mind sharing with everybody? Yeah. Sure. If that's okay with you, um, we will, oh, yeah. um, Elise will drop the in our uh, shared drive. So you can go into Google Drive um, sometime probably next week and you'll be able to navigate to tonight's folder. Yeah, it's a great way to open up a club meeting or something virtual that you may have going on. Um, a follow-up question to the one about uh, member benefits, specifically Office Depot. Um, I think Office Depot. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned registering a club for a discount. How do we do that? So, you, so Office Depot, you don't need to register a club. It's just your own personal registration for the club savings program. So you may, as a club, want to just appoint somebody in your club to be that, that person that has the card or is the shopper at Office Depot. But keep in mind that that benefit extends to you as a, as a member, too. So if you need to purchase home office supplies or, or whatever, it, it's open to you and, and your family and friends. There's no requirement to be a Qantas member um, in that program. You don't have to show your ID or anything like that. Excellent. Um, our next question, can you talk a little more about local partnerships and how clubs mm -hmm. can start those? Mm -hmm. So that, that is very individual. So I, my best suggestion is, um, doing a community analysis 
in your club in your community to find out what the needs are and where your club is most passionate about service and then go talk to those agencies or organizations or schools or after school centers or whatever and see if you can create a partnership and help support them with whatever projects they may have but it has to start with not assuming what is needed in your community so that is where the needs analysis needs to happen to find out where you can be most powerful and most beneficial to your community and then start developing that long-term relationship with that group Um, for partnerships like Office Depot, can you register in the store or only online? Or how do you go? Only about online, that? only online. And then um, if you go to that partner page I talked about, you just click the Office Depot link and it'll go right to the registration page. It's also Office Max, they're a combined company, just so you're aware. It's Office Depot slash Office Max, depending on what you have in your community. And do you know, do those, um, especially with um, Office Max or Office Depot, do those apply to your online orders as well, if you don't they have do. one near you? They do. So those are the questions that I have so far. We'll give maybe one or two more minutes for any questions. Send them in the chat or on Facebook. Um, Elizabeth, as we wait for any final questions, do you have any closing comments or thoughts or things you'd like to share with the Kiwanians in New England and Bermuda? For sure. I just want to say that I'm so thankful you're here tonight and you're engaged as much as I can see. It's clearly, this program is working great. Brian and Elise, kudos to you for developing such a fabulous program to bring you all, you all together on a weekly basis on the left. That's a, that's a lot of work. So great job. Uh, keeping the connection alive during this very challenging time. And I hope that everybody's staying safe. And please continue to reach out to Kiwanis if there's anything you uh, you need or we can help support your efforts. I, it's a small group of 110 staff, but we're, we're very dedicated to making sure that our Kiwanis clubs are, are taking care of and, and doing well. I will, I will also share, um, you know, most association organizations like Kiwanis were very nervous about what COVID was going to bring to us as an organization. And I'm very proud to say that we're doing well and we're doing, doing better than we thought. So Kiwanis is alive and growing and our clubs are, are, are doing well and we're opening new clubs. So uh, continue to just be proud of your membership and know that you're making a huge difference in your community. Thank you. Um, before I ask the last question that came in, I just I want to thank you as well. Um, you are probably the third or fourth um, member of the Kiwanis International staff who has joined us in previous months or who will be joining us next month. And um, mm -hmm. it's really wonderful that you and your colleagues are so willing to come and talk to districts, yeah, especially right time. now. Yeah, and, and if your club wants us to come in and help speak, we, we're happy to do that too. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, last question. How does the Home Depot um, partnership work? I just signed up, but there is no card to show. So this one is, is what happens is the treasurer of your club, which is a little unusual. Most times the treasurer does not start the membership, would then go into the registration page and create a, um, an account with Home Depot, and then they would get a, a key tag. And so anytime that a purchase needs to be made, they would take that key tag to the Home Depot so that you could either get the discount. And also what's really what's really uh, very nice about this partnership is that they will also track your receipts. So if you've applied for a grant at an organization where you need to at the end of the, at the when the grant, when the project's over and you need to report on the grant and, and show your receipt, they can run that report for you to show all the different things you purchased at Home Depot because of that grant. So the, the treasurer needs to go in and register the club receive those key tags, be the owner of the key tags, and then um, give those to whoever wants to go purchase things at Home Depot and get that discount. Then it's often like a commercial vendor discount. So a discount on paint, a discount on um, any sort of building supplies you may need. I, I often think of when Kiwanis clubs will go into the Boys and Girls Club and remodel a room, that would be a perfect connection to make with the Home Depot. That alone right there is a great idea and a great 
great place to leave it to go into one of the partners like a boys and girls club and help remodel that's great yeah i often hear about people who go in and paint or sometimes even remodel the whole kitchen big project but huge value for that club definitely well thank you so much elizabeth um i hope you all will join me in a round of applause wherever you are tonight um this was thank great you. thank you so much for your time you're very welcome have a good night everybody and stay safe Sorry, I really hope you learned something tonight. Um, and I am gonna ask as I give my concluding remarks, um, I'd like every attendee who's here tonight, if you're willing to drop a really quick message in the chat to everybody. And I'll try to read them through quickly at the end. What is one Kiwanis partner that you would like to learn more about in depth? And that will help us think through future workshops or in-person conferences, or I know in the past we've had representatives uh, local representatives from some of these partners come in and speak or do a workshop. So if you could just drop one in the chat, if there was one that was intriguing to you or that you'd like to learn more about in depth, let us know so we can take a look and uh, give some thought to the future. So uh, a reminder to club secretaries, um, if you are on tonight's webinar or if you're not, if you could let your club secretary know that after you hold your annual meeting this spring, you are able to order free printed copies of the Kiwanis Leadership Guide for your incoming officers that need them. We are taking orders online through a Google form and only clubs that request copies through the form will receive them this year. So uh, secretaries and presidents have received an email and we also included it in our email earlier this week promoting the May workshops. So please make sure your secretary places your order by May 15th, which is also the deadline to have club elections. So make sure your secretary knows about that and Elise will have the link in the chat. I know it's blowing up right now with ideas, but uh, there are many ways that you can get to that Google form. So I hope you all saw the email earlier this week um, announcing our four really great workshops um, in recognition of May as membership month starting next week. So Elise, would you mind pulling up the schedule for us? There we go. So we are structuring next month's workshop, uh, workshops to guide you through preparing for new members through to recruitment and to orientation. So we are going to kick off next Wednesday, May 5th with Chris Martz, who's the Director of Global Membership and Engagement and Education from Kiwanis International. And he is presenting Culture, the glue that holds together your club. So the goal of that workshop will help you think through not only new members, but is your club and your club culture ready right now to bring in some new members. On May 12th, we will have our Governor-elect, Gayla Bartlett, presenting Marketing Your Club to Recruit Members. And that will prevent, provide you with strategies for effectively promoting your club in order to attract prospective members and to spread the message of Kiwanis. The following week, May 19th, we will have a panel discussion uh, hosted by Carl Uskadegi, and it will be with millennial Kiwanians about why they joined Kiwanis and what they look for in a Kiwanis club. And so that is recruiting millennials to Kiwanis on May 19th. And we will wrap up our month on May 26th with a presentation about planning a new member orientation. Uh, because it's important to remember that when a new member joins your club, your responsibilities are not over. So we will teach you the important parts of planning an introduction and orientation so your members understand Kiwanis and its structure and the impact that we have on our communities. And that will be presented by Elise and myself. So we hope you can join us on May 26th. Please remember to sign up for these free workshops and encourage your fellow club members to do the same. You can find more information um, in a whole host of places. We have it cross posted everywhere. Um, you can visit our website, newenglandkiwanis.org. You can also look on our district Facebook page and in our district Facebook group. We also have a playlist on our YouTube channel and Elise will drop that link in the chat. So if you have missed a session and you want to watch a recording or you want to share it with your club members, you can access recordings of most of the sessions we've been having since December. Um, if you want to access any of the resources from past workshops, as we mentioned earlier, you can head to your confirmation email that you received today. And at the very end, you'll see a link for virtual workshop materials. And those are organized by week 
so you can take a look to find the workshop you're looking for, the presentation or other materials that have been provided by our outstanding presenters. And we'll also drop a link to that in the chat. So before I wrap up, I want to just zip through the chat and see what uh, organizations were called out. Um, I saw it uh, blowing up quite a bit. Home Depot, Reading is Fundamental, um, Office Depot, Home Depot, Sister Cities, Home Depot and Office Depot, Reading is Fundamental, Reading is Fundamental, um, Boys and Girls Club, Home Depot, Reading is Fundamental, Boy Scouts of America, Sister Cities, Home Depot. Um, so lots of uh, a really good diversity, dollar days, um, but it seems like Home Depot reading is fundamental, Boys and Girls Clubs, those are some really uh, well-received ones that we'll think about and be able to consider for future workshops. Um, I also wanna share a message that I got um, from David Griffin, our uh, interclub liaison. We have 16 clubs represented tonight. That's outstanding. So thank you all for being here. And in closing, um, I want to give another thank you um, to our presenter, to Elizabeth Warren, for joining us. I want to make sure we thank our district education committee um, who helps make this happen. I mentioned David Griffin, who's our interclub liaison and takes attendance every week. Uh, we also have Elise Denorfia and Judy Barrett, who help coordinate the logistics and the behind the scenes uh, work to make these happen and sending out confirmation emails and registration. Um, and thank you to all of you for joining us faithfully. As I said, we're on week 20. This is outstanding. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, with that, we hope you have a great night. Please stay safe, be well, and we will see you next week for our workshop on club culture. Have a nice night, everybody.